Was anyone here not scared out of their mind about what life would look like? I replied, I looked at the data and I replied back, yep, the last two years prices went from this to this in Metro New York, in Miami, in South Florida. It's not gonna get better. Activity isn't gonna pick up. You've got to create the business. You've got to pick your business up. That's two different strategies when it needs to be the same. What do you wanna do, why, what's going on, and what can I do to help? So the way that you bring them value, you know how clients spell value, it's T-I-M-E. When they see your name in that inbox every single week, they're like, there he is, consistent, dependable, hardworking, honest, professional, knowledgeable, everything I want in an agent. It took us a year to get him here because of his schedule, but I guarantee you it's going to be worth it. He's such, such a cool dude. We worked out this morning, very humble, so I'm done talking. Let's get Mr. Ricky Carruth up here. Come on, get up, man. Come on. Good. 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 Thank you guys for coming out. First time to Sacramento. Let's see, my wife and daughter, where are they at? They went out to the car. So when they come back, we'll make, we'll do it, be like, ah, all right? But yeah, we, we travel the, the, the world, really, and, and speak uh, all over. We travel three times a month and speak, and they come with me everywhere. So really, it's them, because <laughs> if, if they wouldn't come with me, I don't know that I would actually come, to be honest with you. But we go and we take little mini vacations everywhere we are. We can take a couple days and check it out and everything. So we're really having a lot of fun. How many of you guys, this is the first time you're seeing me? The first time you're seeing me. <laughs> like, like, no, at all, ever in the world. Never heard of me before. Okay, cool. Welcome. No, good to meet you. He's like, thanks for coming out. I'm gonna go see this no-name guy from Alabama. <laughs> Everybody else, you, you guys know that, number one, I'm not here to sell you anything. I have nothing to sell you. You know, I'm, gonna, I'm a very direct person, and if you need calling out, I'm gonna call you out. So we can get into a little bit of that in the Q&A later. I, I love questions. Q&A, I like to call people out. But, very direct, gonna tell you like it is. My father says, give them meat and potatoes, son. Don't give them nothing else. And that's how it is, because I don't have anything to sell you. I can tell you exactly what I think without any ulterior motives, right? How many guys are, are new agents? Okay. First words of advice, never raise your hand or admit that you're a new agent. <laughs> Don't tell nobody. <laughs> That's what you see. No, I, I was a new agent in 2002. I was 20 years old. All right. How many people here were born in 2002 or after? Okay. <laughs> I've been doing this longer than you've been alive. Now, I got into 2002, uh, Gulf Shores, Alabama, of course. And it took me eight months to get to my first deal. I roofed houses with my father before that. Got in real estate. It's like, I'm not going to do roof, I'm not gonna roof houses forever. Failed a history class in college. I was like, I'm not going to do college either. <laughs> Luckily, real estate, they're just like, anybody can be an agent. <laughs> you don't have to really have many qualifications to become an agent these days. So eight months to get to my first deal. Then, boom, the market blows up just explodes. A lot like what we just saw in 2021, right? Very similar, multiple offers, higher than asking price, no inventory. And then the market, of course, did what? Hmm. Crashed. 
and I lost everything. Why? Because I'm 23. I had a million bucks. I was buying Hummers and Cadillacs. I didn't know what was going to happen. I thought I was a real estate mogul. This is it. I'm retired. I'm the king of the world. Lost everything. And guess what? Went back to roofing. All right. So here, here's the story. Grew up roofing houses, got into real estate. Went to the office for 30 days, sold absolutely zero. Went back to roofing. So now it's roofing, real estate, roofing. Doing roofing and selling real estate on the side to try to get going. Finally sold a property, back in real estate full time. Then the market crashes, and guess what? Back to roofing. <laughs> it's like, and it's my dad's business, so, I'm, so the whole time I'm like, I'm out of here, dad. You know, I'm like, dad, hey. <laughs> but when I got back, now I went back to roofing houses, but when I got back in the business, that was 2008. Let me just give you a, just a, 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 just a, just a basic screenshot of that moment. The easiest time in the world to sell real estate. Why? Prices were half off. You think, how hard do you think it, it is to find somebody who wants to buy a piece of property that's 50% off? Not hard. If prices went down 50% right now, what would happen? Would it be easy or would it be hard to sell? And, and, and honestly, when, if prices drop 50%, that means one thing, there's a lot of inventory. So people have options. How amazing of a market would that be for agents? Tons of inventory, half price, you know, who wants a house? <laughs> it's easy. Right? So I'm just telling you that just to, because that's not going to happen. Could it happen in our lifetime? Sure. Could it happen tomorrow? Maybe. Who knows? The chances are very slim. But if it did, we're good. And that's what I had to learn through losing everything because when I lost everything the first time, I thought that my business was correlated to the market. If the market's doing great, my business is doing great. If the market's doing bad or crashes, my business is doing bad. Not the case. But, but we think that in the beginning, and when you believe that, that's what happens. Whatever you think, that's what happens. And you get caught up in it. And when the market slows down, you slow down with it. You don't see, see it for what the opportunity is, which is what I want to open your mind up to today. So, was somebody clapping? Yeah. Damn. Thanks, Mom. That's what I want to open up your mind up to today. So long story short, from that point, when I realized that, it's like, it's go time. I'm going to crush it now. But 2014, I was selling 100 properties a year, sold 100 properties every year since, single agent, one assistant, was a number one REMAX agent for a while, number one agent in my entire county, even teams. I was beating entire teams uh, for eight years in a row. Um, and honestly, every single person in here can do the same thing. It really comes down to one thing for me, and that was, I'm not the best, I'm not the greatest, I'm not the fastest, the smartest, the most efficient person, obviously. But I wasn't going to quit until I was the best in the world. Not the area, not the country, the world. That's why I'm here right this second. In 2017, I got bored, I'll admit, selling real estate. You know, once you get up there, it's like, what, what else is there? Let me go expand and become the best in the world at something else now. And that's when I started coaching, writing, speaking. And I got into that arena where I had actually started doing social media. Never did social media from a real estate business. Still don't do social media from a real estate business. You should do real estate. You should do social media for your real estate business. I'm just telling you, you don't have to. Everybody wants to act like it's mandatory. And in my mind, you 100% should do it. It's not mandatory for you to succeed or fail. That's shocking, right? Mom? <laughs> but never stopping until you're the best in the world. When I was in high school, I'm going to play football. Everybody laughed. I walked out of high school with a full paid scholarship, Missouri Valley College in Missouri. When I got in real estate, everybody laughed. You're too young. Number one agent in my entire county for eight years in a row. 
smoking the people that laughed. When I started making videos in 2017, you remember this, don't you, Mom? I always find somebody to pick on. <laughs> Started making videos, what everybody do? Laugh. And two weeks ago, I'm in Vegas speaking after Bradley, after Andy Elliott, right? National news. Um, there's 300 people here, would you say? And only three or four didn't know me. You guys are here because I said I was gonna come. That's because I started making videos in 2017. Now, that seems like a long time ago compared to right now. You think back to 2002, that sounds like a long time ago. This stuff takes a long time. When I got back in 2008, it was 2014 when I sold 100 properties for the first year. That's six years after I made it, lost it, came back, figured out the secret to this whole thing. It still took me six years of grinding my ever-living face off to get to 100 deals. I haven't sold anything in three months. Crybabies. <laughs> it's kind of like buyers right now, right? Aren't they a bunch of crybabies? <laughs> what I'm saying is, is the secret is not caring how long it takes, but realizing you're not going to quit until you're the best in the world. Why aren't we trying to be the best in the world? We can read everything about people that are best in the world. We can watch them on YouTube. We can read books that they wrote. We have access to everything that the best in the world have. Why aren't we trying to become best in the world at what we do? That's my ambition. And that's why I'm here today. And hopefully, since you guys are in the room, see, it means something when you show up. Because when you, it's way different than watching a YouTube video. If you're watching YouTube, then sorry. <laughs> But being in the same room with a certain type of energy is a whole different level than watching a video. And it can literally change the entire trajectory of your career, your entire perspective. Your, I mean, the way that you think, it's, it's like if you think the market is correlated to your business, then that's what happens. It's all perception. Then you don't have anything to worry about except for the fact that are you going to Continue until you're the best in the world. All right, let's make some noise. Right. Who wants to make a, a million dollars? Oh, wait. Let me rephrase. Who's already making a million dollars? Nobody? Okay. We want to make a million dollars, though, right? Okay. Then write it down right now. One million dollars. You wrote it down? If you're not writing it down, then that tells me, I don't want to make a million dollars. I don't want to make a million dollars. I'm not coachable. I'm, I'm part of the 99% of people who come to these things and leave and don't change anything in my business. That's who I am. Now, What's the first word? Don't just blurt it out, okay? Don't think about it. What's the first word that comes to mind when you hear the word Alabama? <laughs> what? Okay, I can't hear you guys. It's brouhaha. Hmm? Shrimp for scum. All right. I was in uh, New York and asked that. You know what they said? Mud. <laughs> I said, I don't know about anything about no mud. Is, this, is the clicker working? There we go. Oh, I hit the wrong. There we go. Boom. I don't know nothing about no mud. All I know about is sand, baby. This, this is where I grew up. This is where I live. Of course, those buildings weren't there when I was born, but I watched all this build. Like These little buildings you see, they were there back then. Uh, but this is the Alabama Gulf Coast, right on the Florida line. 
Okay, it goes for, you, you take the Florida beaches and extend them about 40 miles into Alabama. And this is what it looks like. It's a small town, there's 20,000 population, but we've got about 8 million visitors every year. So it's a huge tourist uh, destination, if you will. Um, amazing restaurants, and we love it. We grew up there, all our family's there. Uh, uh, the cost of living is, is amazing. We got the cheapest property taxes in, in the country, number one. But if you guys think, where do we go on vacation this year, right? Come to Gulf Shores and let me know. We can, we can go have a coffee, I'll show you around. Might even sell you a condo or two. <laughs> but this is where I'm at, okay? So when people think Alabama, they think Forrest Gump, Roll Tide, mud. But I don't think anything about that, right? Because I'm living in a bubble down there. And it's absolutely gorgeous. This, here we go. Th this is not to brag. This is just receipts. And this is to prove to you what is possible. This, is, this today is about you. It's not about me. It's about how you can go out and do whatever it is that you're trying to do. This is a screenshot of eight years of MLS, the eight years that I told you that I was number one in, in our county out of every agent, every single agent. There it is, black and white. This is just to show you what is possible. Now, how did I do this? This is the road I wanna take you down. This is an illustration, not exact, but this gives you a good visualization of my business when I got back on the business in 2008. And if you, if you realize that the red is the market, the blue is my business. The red continued to go down. These are prices, bottomed out in 2012 and started coming back up. My business, what I did on a day-to-day -day was no different from 2008 to 2009 to 2010, 2011. You only have so many hours in a day. Nothing I did was different, okay? Why did my business explode? in 2013 and 14, that was the first year I did 100 deals. Because of all the work I did in eight, nine, 10, 11, building my base, building my foundation, expanding my footprint and my market. And I was really just treading water. My business was about flat, right, through that whole thing. But all of a sudden, when you combine your efforts and the seeds that you planted for years with a market surge, your business just explodes. It's like in 2021, a lot of you had an incredible year, right? Part of that was you and part of it was the market. And this year, some of you are doing not so good, right? The market can't take you out, but it will fluctuate your business. And you wanna put yourself in the best position possible to stair step yourself every year and through the, 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 the larger market cycles that happen once a decade. Every year there's a cycle. How do we take advantage of those cycles to stair-step our income every year? Then you have the huge cycles, which we're in the downside of one now. How do we take advantage of those cycles? They're all to be taken advantage of. They, they're, they're needed. See, this market cycle and back in 2008 was needed for me to be able to get where I wanted to go. Without it, it would have taken longer because my business expanded with the market, right? So this is your 2008 right now. Now, <laughs> right now we're on track to do what? 4.2, 4.3 million transactions in the country, right? I actually have this. We're on track to do 4.2, 4.3 million transactions. Last year we did 5 million. The year before we did 6 million. This year we're doing 4.2-ish, okay? If you see here, back in 2008, we did 4.1 million transactions. We're literally at 2008 levels right now in terms of the number of transactions. This is 2008, right this second. The only reason that we haven't seen prices 
crash like back then is because there's no mortgage meltdown happening. That's what this is for me. I can take the market and say, this is the most, you know, maybe things go a different direction, but what's the chances? And now when you bet big on what the highest probability is on what the market might do over the next three to five, and you bet big there and you win, you win big. And if the market doesn't do that, guess what? You still win. You don't, you can't lose. So that, that's how I actually, so right now we need to think, okay, where's the market going? Well, over the next two to three years, mortgage rates are going to come down. We may or may not be peaked out. We're somewhere close to peaked out, but they're going to drift down slowly over the next two to three years. It's going to open up so much inventory and so many uh, buyers. I'm going to get into demand and everything else, but right here, you see it took five years to get back to five million transactions from 2008 to 2013, five years. Not going to happen this time. It's going to be a violent resurgence back to five million transactions either next year or the year after, right? I think next year, my prediction is like 4.8-ish to five mil and then well over five mil the year after that. Now, here we go. Let's get into it. You guys know all the people that say, it's gonna crash, <laughs> right? Price is gonna drop 35%, blah, 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 right? And they're getting like three, 400,000 views per video saying this stuff with really nothing to back it up. Now what's going to happen? This is median home prices. What do you see that happens every single year? It's an Alabama thing. Huh? Every fall it trickles down all the way to around January, into January and it comes back up and it shoots up and then falls back down through the fall. Now, we're starting to see prices soften right now, right? Are you guys seeing that here? Market's kind of slowing down a tick. Happens every year at the same time. Nothing new. But what we're going to start to see in the data and in the headlines and on YouTube is here's the crash I was talking about. I'm already seeing it. Here's the crash I was talking about. No, this is what happens every single year, you dipshit. <laughs> So it happens every single year. This isn't the crash, right? And the same guys were saying prices would be down like 30, 40% right now. While I've been saying for the past three or four months, we're gonna hit all time highs. We're gonna go positive year over year. So I want you to realize this right here is that we're going to see prices soften for the rest of the year. Don't worry about it. That's fine. But get, get, the, get the media out of your head about this. Stay on track, build your database, do the things you need to do. This is mind blowing. This is homes sold, the number of transactions, 2021, 22, and so far through 2023. What do you see there? Look at the correlation. Wow, it blows my mind. Look at how every year it starts out down, starts to pick up the same time of year. And then you see halfway through the year, you see that little V, how they all line up. That's insane. And then look through the rest of the year, look at the rest of the little V's and the little ebbs and flows. That's absolutely insane how seasonal this business really is. Now, you see that 2021 and 22 peaked out about this time of year and then started to come down. We're going to see it this year. Okay. We're going to see it this year, just like we see every year. And what's even more interesting, 2021, the year of the boom, right? hundred thousand over asking price, 30 offers per listing, right? Let sales went down in the second half of the year during the boom year. Is that eye opening to you? What were we all doing? April 28th, 2020. You guys are in California, so this was even probably worse. Alabama, I was still like having parties and showing condos and like. 
We're like, super spreader, what is that? <laughs> we were all locked in our houses, right? Couldn't leave. Were we scared to death of the unknown? Did we think our family was going to die of a, of a virus we knew nothing about? Were we going to die? Or do we even have jobs anymore? Is the whole financial uh, system going to crash and burn? We didn't know anything, right? Was anyone here not scared out of their mind about what life would look like? No, everybody was scared out of their mind, right? You, 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 you weren't? You were just like, you know, <laughs> Corona. <laughs> You're like, is that a beer? Okay, we're still locked in our homes. Still locked in our homes. Economy's not opened back up yet. I put out a video and I said, the real estate market's going to surge harder than we've ever seen at a point when we were scared to death as a country. It's still on YouTube. How did I see that? Why did I think that? Because of two things. One, when I see a retraction of transactions, I only know that's building up demand. And when that rubber band gets let go, it, it's, it's, like a, it's like a rocket ship, number one. So when I saw all that, all that business leave so fast, 20% down transactions and pending deals during that 45 day shutdown. When I saw that and then I saw stimulus starting to happen, it was a no brainer for me that the, the market was gonna explode. I didn't know it was gonna, happen, gonna go on for a year and a half, right? But I knew that we were fixing to see something monumental. Uh, December, this December on six, in a video I said, this is the bottom for home prices. I was about a month early, but I'll take it. Right, Mom? <laughs> January 12th in Vegas, I said, we're about to see this massive surge. This is in January. We're about to see this massive surge as buyers as interest rates start to soften. Interest rates softened. We saw a massive surge of buyers, and this is when we started seeing multiple offers on everything. Remember that in the spring? And then here more recently, I said, not only are we about to go positive year over year prices, but we're about to see all time new highs. This is long before any of, any of this was even, even coming close to being a reality, right? So again, educated, like I'm a professional educated guesser. I can look at the data and I can say, this is the most probable chance of happening. How can I take advantage of this? So we saw prices, they hit all time new highs. This is from Redfin, it shows prices. When that blue line was about halfway, okay, about halfway, that's when I realized that we're gonna go, I know for, I knew for a fact we're gonna go positive year over year because the 2022 wall from June to say August, see how that went straight down? It created a wall that I felt there was no problem we were gonna bust right through that. At the time, I didn't realize that we were more than likely going to go to all-time new highs, but look at what's happening. Do you see the very top of the blue line, how it's starting to level off just a tad? That's the beginnings. And, and, and in 2021, the orange, the year of the boom, look at what happened. Prices went down during that time. Is that, is that amazing? Am, am I clicking on anything? Real estate is local, Ricky. It's so hyper local. You're talking national numbers. It means nothing. Here's some of the hardest hit markets. Sacramento, Phoenix, Austin, San Francisco. Prices bottomed out in January. Boom, boom, boom. People try to call me out all the time. I said, uh, things are going to slow down in the fall. Well, that doesn't apply to New York or South Florida. I, reply, I looked at the data and I replied back, yep, the last two years, prices went from this to this in Metro New York, in Miami, in South Florida. People don't even look at data. They just, I think I'm going to send this guy a message. <laughs> <laughs> what goes up must come down, right? Prices are so high, got to come down gonna come down no doubt about it they can't stay like this this is appreciation of homes in the u.s going back to 42. 
The green is positive appreciation years. You can look at that without even looking at the numbers and just do the colors and see where I'm about to go with this. Back in the 40s, there were five years of double digit appreciation. Double digit for five years. And they said, what goes up must come down. No, nope. it did two, zero, four, six, four, 12, one, zero, one, three. It continued. It didn't, never had a negative year. That doesn't mean that it might not have dipped negative and ended up the year positive. This is 12 month calendar year appreciation. That doesn't mean there weren't some micro ebbs and flows of prices but we didn't end the year negative. If you go to the 70s, remember that? No, you were born in 2000. <laughs> Interest rates went to 18, 19%. Everybody's like, oh, remember them days? It's just about to get bad. Well, when you look at those days and you see six years of great growth, four of which were double digit appreciation years, what goes up must come down. Well, right after all that, we had a 7%, a 5, a 1, a 5, a 5, a 7, a 10, a 8, a 7, a 4. It was a good deal to buy real estate, even in 79, when it was at the peak of the six-year run and went up 17% that year. You still would have won. Even just the next year, you were up. And then we get into the 2000s. We had the run-up with the mortgage subprime lending meltdown. And this was the first real moment. Of course, we had that cumulative two year drop of 1% in the early 90s. And some places had it worse than others. I believe here may have may have seen a little bit of a, a lot of a downturn during that time. So it, it is local. But generally speaking here, and we saw that 50% drop in the late 2000s. Here more recently, we had two two years of double digit appreciation years and we're going nuts about it and what goes up must come down well maybe but what are the chances right and how can I put myself in a position to win either way that's what I like win-win recessions coming yeah right it might but to us, that if, if prices come down, again, I'll start with how I start, say this from what I started with. If prices go down, think of how easy it is to sell real estate. If you see transactions slow and inventory go up and prices start to go down, don't think, oh my God, let's start backtracking and maybe I need to get out of the business. Maybe I need to find another job. You need to say, oh, here we go. Let me, let me lean into this. Let me find people that want to buy, need to buy at lower prices. You got to lean in. You can't back off of this business. There's too many agents that want your position in the market. But the point of this one was prices don't go down during recessions. It did in 2008. We might have seen a little bit of a blip there in the early 90s. But they hold solid, which they've been holding solid. Look, if prices were going to go down, don't you think they would go down if mortgage rates more than doubled the quickest that we've ever seen it? Don't you think that they wouldn't be hitting all time new highs a year later? It takes time for the system to work itself out. Great. Well, in the meantime, I'm just going to sit here and crush it until this happens. Unaffordability. Why? 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 <laughs> Monthly mortgage payments. This is going back to 89. Looks horrifying, right? Right? A lot of buyers having a hard time. And they are having a hard time. And I'll tell you why. Not they, everyone, all of us, me, you, everybody was spoiled of, of our situation over the last decade and a half of how cheap money was and how cheap prices were and how low mortgage payments were. I mean, I mean look at that. It, w during the 11, thir uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, we were even lower, like not even, not even inflation adjusted numbers, we were lower mortgage payments than in the, in the 90s. That's insane. I mean, inflation did grow between the 90s and, 
in, in the, after 2010. That's insanity. And they're, they're, they're upset that that world doesn't exist anymore. Now, if we adjust this to inflation, what do we see? Oh, now, it, now it's starting to become a much clearer picture when you adjust mortgage payments to inflation. Now we're seeing that, yeah, we're a little high, but all we're doing is getting back to normal of the 90s and the early 2000s. We're just getting back to normal. We've been spoiled. We, all of us, not the ones that can't afford houses. All of us were spoiled. I should have bought more. You should have bought more. We all should have bought more during that time. Does that make sense? Make some noise then. Okay, what's going to happen short and long term? And this is just my theory. Short term, I've already went over. We're going to see prices soften. We're going to see transactions soften in the fall. What does that mean for you? You should have already been, and if not right now today, going all in to talk to as many people as you can to build momentum going into the fall so that you, your business doesn't suffer as much. If you're getting used to the market now and, and you know, you're kind of just sliding by, you're treading water, you're really going to be sucking wind when the market dips a little bit this, this, in this season. If you're struggling right now, you're really going to be struggling in a couple of months. It's not going to get better. Activity isn't going to pick up. You've got to create the business. You've got to pick your business up. Long term, we're going to see uh, mortgage rates continue to dwindle over the next couple of years. It's going to open up so much inventory and demand. And it's going to be amazing. It's going to be euphoric for us. But if, if we know the wave is coming. The only answer is to build your database to the moon so that you have so many people that love you, that want to do business with you. The people right now, the sellers who don't want to sell because mortgage rates are high, they don't want to sell, they're sitting on 3% interest, there's nothing to buy, they don't, want to, they don't want to pay 7% interest anyway, those are the ones you want. You want to stack thousands of those in your database and stay in touch with them. Don't let any of them forget who you are because when the market flips, they're going to, they're, every single day, they hate their house more and more and more. <laughs> they, they, they got handcuffs. Somebody said they're golden handcuffs. They're locked into their home. Then send them emails <laughs> every week on the same time. <laughs> got one from there, got you. You've been waiting your whole life to do that, hadn't you? <laughs> Opportunity! Anybody over here? It's unlimited. I'll tell you what it has to do with your business. <laughs> Mom, we've been through <laughs> we've been through this. It don't mean anything. Who cares? Go out there and help people do what they want to do. It's unlimited. You can't do it all. That's why there's so many agents. How many agents are in Sacramento? 14,000. 14,000. How many of them sell properties every year? A there you go. You got a thousand people. The market surges back 110% of the time. 110, not 100, not 90, not 98, 110. It always surges back. You have to put yourself in position where your business is positioned to take advantage of the resurgence. And of course, closings happen every day by the truckloads for the rest of your life, regardless of market conditions. If you go back to dot-com crash 2008, 9-11, pandemic, whatever you want to go back to, go back and look at the county records and look at the MLS and see how many closings were happening every single day during the scariest economic times in our, in our history. They were happening every day. Now, if you go back right now and you look at 2008 numbers, that whole five, six year span of the market, and you look at those numbers and you see number of transactions, just go local, number of transactions, prices, you know, inventory, that whole, the whole picture of the market, you know what you say when you go back and you look at all that? You say, hmm, that wasn't so bad. That was actually a pretty good, pretty good market, right? But at the time, 
people thought we were dying. You look back, knowing how it played out, you're like, man, that was a good market. When you look at all these economic downturn moments and you realize that real estate just kept on trucking, then you start, things start clicking a little bit. And you're like, you know what? No, market can't take me down. Other agents can't take me down. The only person to take me down is me if I don't have the right perception about how this business and, and, and this industry actually operates. Keep it simple. I'm not gonna tell you how to go talk to property owners because everybody has a different opinion. I don't care how you talk to property owners, but you need to be talking to them. If you're not talking to them, you're gonna be talking to somebody. Bill collectors, lawyers, bankruptcy people. <laughs> talk to property owners, make a great first impression, do a weekly email, boom, you're done. You can snowball that into a million dollar a year business over time. It's not hard. You just have to think one thing. I'm not going to stop until I'm the very best in the world. Again, got back in in 2008 after losing everything. Sleeping, on, sleeping in my car. Sleeping on friends' couches, eating out of people's refrigerators, working on an oil rig for a year. Roofing houses, serving tables. No bills. Why did I do all that? I love to work. But when I got back in, it took me six years before I hit 100 deals. You just don't stop until it happens. I don't know how long it's going to take you, but I know that you can get there if you don't stop until it happens. Follow this simple formula. Can't be that simple. Yes, it is. People want to create, they want to, they want to make jobs for themselves. I'm going to call my database every year. Why? That's creating a new job for yourself. Don't you want a business that just deals fall in your lap every day? Right. So don't create all these extra jobs for yourself. Have simple processes that snowball into the exact business that you want. Residual business that deals fall in your lap every day. Now we know that's the goal, right? Now we have to visualize how to do it. It's real simple. Daily goal. Make five new friends or property owners contact. A four-week a four template. Week one, two, three, four. And then you can rotate those through the, through the month, every month, right? Week one, stats of the month. And we've got it laid out. It's like the template is almost a training session. It tells you exactly how to lay it out, very simply. Stats of the month. Restaurant of the month. Reply back. Here, here's my experience of this restaurant. Here's a great picture of it. Reply back for a chance to win a gift card. Week three is deal of the month. Listing of the month. Your favorite deal. The best deal you can find. Week four is breaking news of the month. You just rotate these every month. People are overcomplicating it. That's why I just went ahead and just let me just create a four week template. Right? Thank you. You already knew about that. This is a screenshot of, let's see, this is back in Mayish, but you can see I, mine goes out to 19,000 people, and I've got 7,500 that open it every week. Okay, that's, it's a 40% open rate. It's, you know, 30, 40% is where you want to be, right? Where do you get property owners? RedXDiscount.com. Geoleads Plus, Expires Plus, Multi-Line Dialer. Let's, Expireds? You got who who hates expireds? Come on. Up high. I want to see you. Yeah. Okay. Why? Um, I, I just haven't had really good luck with them. Okay. What do you tell them when you call them? I tell them that I see that their property's been on for a long time and that if they want to make an appointment with me to talk about Click. It, You're not talking to them like they're your mom or dad. Now, what kind of leads do you get? Zillow or where, where, what's your thing, your lead gen? How do you get leads? So, I've been with Home and I've worked with them. So, you don't really get leads. You just kind of have your database and you kind of work that. I mean, I get leads then. Okay. Now, when you call those leads, how, what do you say on those conversations? Boom. See, if you would talk to the expires like you talk to the Redfin buyers, your business would explode. You're mate, you're mate, you're, you're, you're classifying these as two different type of leads when they're the exact same person. 
You should say, hey, I saw your house was on the market. Whatever happened with that? What can I do to help? So you just told the Redfin person, what can I do to help? But you told the expired person, would you like to set an appointment up with me? That's two different strategies when it needs to be the same. What do you want to do? Why? What's going on? And what can I do to help? The Redfin uh, strategy is great. That's, ex that's perfect. Now, if I can get you to do that with expired, your business will explode. Expireds plus, you can go back 10 years worth. We don't have a lot of expireds. We live in a small town. See, I got like two expireds a day in my market. But with this, I can go back 10 years worth of expireds, withdrawns, and cancels. Now I got leads for the rest of my career. Now these are the very best conversations. Why? You call a one-year-old, a two-year-old, a three-year-old expired, and you say, hey, I saw you were trying to sell this house at one point. Whatever happened with that? And you just listen. It's amazing what happens. They just start telling you a story. Because what happens is, is you sound like a detective trying to get to the bottom of a case. And now they become your helper. Let me help you get to the bottom of this. Oh, we sold that back then. Oh, okay, cool. Where'd you guys move to? Do you like it? Do you, do you buy rental properties? Are you going to move again soon? What can I do to help you? Do you have an agent you normally work with? I'd love to work with you if you guys ever decide to do anything. Is it okay if I stay in touch? Great, what's a good email? Bam, weekly email. Now they never forget who I am. And I'm just stacking, stacking. What's this slide gonna be? It's almost a mystery for me too. <laughs> if you wanna do one deal a week, let me go back. Let's see, volunteer. How many active buyers and sellers? You're a coach, agent. <laughs> Let's see, everybody's looking down at their phone like, please don't pick me, please don't pick me, please don't pick me. <laughs> I've never seen so many. How many active buyers and sellers, like people that might buy or sell something in the next six months with you? How many of those are you working with right now? Uh, probably about six. Four is the most common answer, right? That's why I said that. You're pretty close to it, which is where just about everyone is. Now, the problem is statistically, four statistically is 0.8 deals, which is nothing. So you're barely working on one deal. Statistically, maybe two or three buy or whatever, but statistically, you're working on like one deal right now. Okay, just statistically speaking. If you want to close one deal a week, Every week, and this is not a theory, this, is, this has been tried and true for years and years and years of my coaching students and my own business. If you want to close one deal a week, 15 to 20 active buyers and sellers at all times. Now, when, when somebody, you got to maintain that list and take people off that list that ghost you, move forward with you or another agent, decide they don't want to do a deal, you got to take them off. That's not a true number now. You have, to maintain, you have to maintain and know exactly what that list is, and, and you got to add people to the list as people drop off. If you maintain, I'm talking active, not when they become inactive and you're still counting that as a number, active, you will close one deal a week. Guaranteed. You're going to close two deals a week? 25 plus. This is what I did for eight years in a row, and I closed two deals a week. Two, 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 two. For eight years. What's 52 times eight? Like... 400 and something. That's what I did. 25 plus active buyers and sellers. Now the, the, now the cool part is once you build your database up to that point that you're making the amount of money you want to make, you don't have to prospect anymore a day in your life. And you just keep doing that weekly email and you close 1% of your database. If you want to close 50 deals a year, build it up to 5,000. You want to close 100 deals a year, build it up to 10,000. In 2017, my database was at uh, 10,000. I made a million bucks. The first, that was the first. Uh, I passed February 15th, uh, Hangar License at Lion, Oak Grove, March 1st. I got my first deal six weeks after. Mm -hmm. and, and I got it from Facebook, you guys. Yeah. The power of social media. Yeah. So my question is to make my $1 million, <laughs> Sorry. 
Um, because I know I can do this. Um, do you work with a team? Do you have a team? No, absolutely not. And no disrespect to any teams at all, right? But I'm not going to give somebody 50% for giving me a bullshit lead and I'm not going to I'm not going to I'm not going to take 50% from somebody. Humans are everywhere. Lead humans aka leads. They're everywhere. You found one on Facebook. You can call them all day long. I found my second one also on Facebook. Don't know them. They've never seen me before. I'm a new I'm working on my second deal from Facebook. Yeah, nice, congrats. How's it going, Ricky? Uh, Miguel here. Hey, Miguel. Hey, uh, so I have a pretty big database and I haven't really tapped into it. Kind of uh, in, the, in the question of how do I start, what do you start with to like start, you know, because you know, they get, houses and things like that from me, but how do you switch it from just, you know, sending houses to actually having that good content and, you know, things to create traction? The thing that stands out is, is your opinions on things, right? So when you, when you send a house, also say why you're sending the house, why you think it's a good deal, right? I went by the house and looked at it. It looks great. It had a great feel, whatever. Um, if you've got generic, e a lot of people have their, comp their brokerage or some company sending out these generic emails. And it's so funny because I get like five of them at the same time from different agents, same subject. You open it up and it's like, here's how to cook shrimp etouffee. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> I can Google something if I want to eat. You know what I mean? I don't, need my, I don't need my agent to send me recipes or how to cook, how to, what color to paint my walls, in the, my walls in the fall, right? I don't need that generic information. And that's why, you know, you know, they may have a great relationship with the client. The client sees that and they see their name that stays in front of them, but it's not really bringing them any value, right? So the way that you bring them value, you know how clients spell value? It's T-I-M-E. When they look at the email, they know it went out to everybody, but when they realize, wait a minute, he spent some time here to tell his audience about his experience at this restaurant and how he liked it and how I should go there too. And he's also going to give me an opportunity to win a gift card. That's value. When you say prices are, you know, our inventory in Sacramento is down 40% and you, and you know, he, here's the chart. You know, you know, inventory is down 40% and underneath it's like um, inventory is down a whole lot from last year. But guess what? 63% of people are still listing their properties and I'm out here grinding. Whatever your little thing is, when you add your two cents into social media is a good place to talk about this, to have this conversation because a lot of people are, do generic content, right? And they lose. It doesn't win until you spend time creating the content, right? Email is a, what, what, how many times a day do you think people check their email? All day long, right? How many times do you think they check social media? All day long, right? You now what's the motion, the physical motion that, that, they, that they do when they check their email? What's the physical motion when they check their social media? Same thing, right? Email is a social media platform. It is social media. It's a place that you post original, consistent content to your audience. Same thing. It's just a different format. It's a different platform. All the platforms are different. You need to think of email as another social media platform that's a must. Now, all the other social media platforms have a what? 5% organic reach. 10% at the most, where 5 or 10% of your followers actually see the content that you post? Does it, is that true? How many people in your, in your database of an email do you think see the email in their inbox? They may not open it, but how many do you think see it? Well, I showed you 40% actually opened it, right? That's a lot more than the 10% that see a social media post right there, not to mention 
the people that aren't opening it, who appreciate seeing it, who open it three weeks in a row in four years because now they're interested and call me on the fifth week and say, I want to buy and sell this. That's where the magic is. Just the fact that they see it. That's what's so crazy. A lot of people are like, what do I put in my email? Most of the people that are going to do business with you aren't even opening your emails because they're just not interested in buying and selling anything right now. But when they do become more and more interested, they will begin to open them and then they will call you. Um, did you see the thing? Start my weekly email.com. Just go there and get a template. I'm about to have the four week, one, two, three, four. In the next couple of weeks, it'll be a Ricky Crew tab and constant contacts for those four templates. It's, it, you, they already create a custom template for you, just like mine with your information, your website, your headshot, everything. They already do that. Just do that and just bring value about the local market, not national stats, not um, generic information, real local stuff that people are interested in, and then give your two cents on it. Hey, Ricky, my name is Constantine with Colin Baker. I've been watching you for a while. Hey, Constantine with Pocket Guy. <laughs> yeah, sorry, my name is Constantine with Colin Baker. <laughs> Actually, one of my friends up here on your cold calling uh, videos is Dabon, do you remember him? Yeah. Yeah, so um, uh, my question is, you were talking about becoming friends with the homeowners. Mm -hmm. When you do that, how often do you call them? Do you rely more on the weekly email to build that relationship with them? Or do you, how often do you call them? And what do you talk about? Do you provide a little, little bit of value each time and try to get to know them? Because a lot of times they're rushed on the phone, they, they, they think they know what you're calling about, and they just want to get it done over with. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... I never called them. Why would I? See, the problem is, is that I'm trying to create a business that, that sends me residual business every day with, with very little effort. If I just imagine a world where I just send an email out every week and two deals fall in my lap, right? Isn't that what we want? I don't want to build a business around, oh, I have to call these people every year. That's great and everything, but Part of the magic that makes what I'm saying work is volume. Because this isn't gonna work for everyone. There's some people that want the calls every year and they're gonna do business with another agent. That's okay. All I want are the people that appreciate that. See, the, the, the way that I retain clients is not calling them once a year. It's when they need something, they know how I'm gonna handle it. I'm jumping right on it. I'm calling them right back. I'm going to work for them, I'm going to war for them. And when they do a deal, it goes so smooth. And they're like, I don't, I don't care what happens. I'm never going to use anybody else but Ricky because this is how real estate is supposed to be done. When you give them that great experience, you don't have to call them every year. When they see your name in that inbox every single week, they're like, there he is. Consistent, dependable, hardworking, honest, professional, knowledgeable, everything I want in an agent right there. That's who I want. He took care of me. He took care of my sister. He sends me an email every week with loaded with value. That's my guy. I don't care what happens. Now, you're going to have different sectors in your database. You're going to have the people that are loyal to you that will never use another agent ever again in their life, which is like this big. Then you're going to have another sector of your database of people that might use you this time, that might use another agent the next time. That's okay. And then you've got this outer edge, which is the largest edge of people that will never use you. They have another agent. They da 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 da. Right? Just realize not everybody's gonna be a loyal client. The name of the game here, guys, is volume. You need you heard what I said. You want five thousand, ten thousand, twenty thousand people in this database. And I'm not trying to create new jobs for myself where I have to do things every year. That's stressful. I want to create an easy, simple, scalable business. So back to your weekly email. What are your thoughts? Back to it. That's all we've <laughs> talked about. Um, what are your thoughts on shooting a video for that, like bomb off or something like that? I never did it. Um, bomb bomb wasn't around when I got started with all this. The putting a YouTube link in my email sends them off out of my ecosystem into YouTube's ecosystem. If I put a YouTube link in my, in my email, they watch it. Now YouTube says, oh, they're interested in real estate in Sacramento. Let's send them all these videos about real estate in Sacramento with all these other real estate agents, right? 
I literally just handed my client over to the pack of wolves on YouTube, right? I know bomb bomb is embedded into the thing and it doesn't do that or whatever. Um, when I used bomb bomb, I remember I had to click and it went to like a web page to see the video. Does it still do that? No, it's actually in the email. I think it's okay if it's like that. Another way you can do YouTube videos in the email is embed the, that video on a, on a web page on your website and send them the link of the website of, of that URL added, you know, through YouTube or whatever, and then, you know, have a link where they can click to set an appointment or whatever. Say whatever you wanted to say. But be careful sending people to other platforms is all I would say about that. If you want to do videos in your email and you're not sending them to other platforms, knock yourself out. That's fine. I'm not going to do it because I don't even feel like email is even a video platform. Remember I said it was like a social media platform? I, I look at it more like a blog style platform where people just, here's the, here's the difference. And this is why I don't like it. The reason why Uber, Amazon, even Facebook and Apple and all these companies have become so big is because they save people time, right? And so when people, people literally click on a sales email and look at it literally for one second. Now, if they got to sit through a two minute, a 30 second, a three minute video, chances are they, most people are not going to open up the rest of my emails. If they can't click on it, and literally get everything in a matter of seconds, get in and out, get that value and leave. If they want to see new listings, boom, they click on it, they look at it, boom, they're out. If they wanted to see what that stat was, boom, okay, prices are up, I, I'm out. Whatever that little thing was they wanted to see, if they can't get in and out, then they're going to be out. They're going to unsubscribe. That's my thoughts on it, is video is for the video platforms, and I don't think email is a video platform. I think it's a platform people want to be in and out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to make it myself, and it depends on what it is. There's, there, there's four, the highest, the four highest priorities for an agent, okay? Showing property, listing appointments, uh, writing offers, and negotiating offers. So if it's one of those four things, though, one of those four things trump everything else, including calls. If somebody wants to write an offer, if they want me to look at a house to see what it's worth, if they want to, if, 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 I, get a, if I get a counter offer back on something, not, not repair addendum, okay? I can wait, I can, I can ignore that for several hours. I'm talking about getting a deal done, negotiating. Time is of the essence. If it's negotiating, writing, somebody says, hey, I want, I'm, yeah, remember the house we saw yesterday? Yeah, well, me and my wife, we, talk, we want to write an offer right now. I'm done. What do you want to write? How do you want to write it? I'm writing it right now. I don't care what's going on. So yeah, if it's one of those four things, of course, I'll, I'll dump making calls. If it's not one of those four things, and this is the problem that you're making, that everyone's making, they're taking something that's not one of these four things, and they're thinking that that trumps calls, and it doesn't. There's, an ex there's exceptions to the rule here and there, but 99.9% .9 of the time, anything else does not trump the call session. And, and the call session is actually what sets you up for the residual business where you just do an email or post something and you do deals, deals fall in your lap. That, that, that's, what the, that's what the calls are building up. It's building up your short and long-term business and you're not doing it because you wanna look up properties for a buyer or repair addendum requests. You can do that afterwards. Think about it like this. If you're showing property, all right, you're walking through houses and you're right there face to face with your buyer, you're walking through, you're looking at all the stuff and your phone starts to ring in your pocket. Are you going to answer it? 
Nope. You're not even going to look at it. You don't even know what it is, right? But if you're making calls and your phone rings, what are you going to do? Look at it. Oh, no. It's Johnny. He has a repair addendum request I have to handle right now. I have to skip these calls. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, future self. Because every, every call session you skip, it pushes your dream out another three months. I'm sorry, future self. We'll have to delay that, that, that awesome life another three months. Mom. <laughs> if you can ignore the call for the buyer walking through the house then what's the difference? Why can't we ignore these situations when we're doing it? Even, I just said it's a higher priority to show houses, but, but, but when that opportunity is not around, the calls are the highest priority. And when you're dumping the highest priority for whatever that call was, that's a problem. And you're not working on, and this is something we all have, pro- I had a lot of trouble with this too. Don't get me wrong. But it's something I want to try to help you understand today. The four things are negotiating deals, writing offers, showing property, and listing appointments. I'll stop anything to go do one of those four activities. That's why I make calls. I've got a girl in Panama City. She's crushing it. She went from 75000 to 500000 last year. Like she did seventy five, like two or three years ago. She did five hundred. She's like... I don't have time to make calls. I'm like, what are you doing? Well, I'm showing property. I'm writing offers. I'm negotiating. I'm going to listing appointments. I'm like, well, that's why you made all the calls for so long is to get to this place where you're just deal after deal after deal. But she's scared her business is going to suffer because she's letting the foot off the gas of what got her there. Right? And this is a big struggle. And she doesn't have a great admin. That's kind of the next step. You've got to have a great admin when you get to that level if a great admin will double your business overnight. A bad admin will drive your business straight into the ground. Ricky, oh, uh, in regards to everything that you've done to build your weekly emails that go out every day, how did you build your database? I know you're huge on making phone calls. Did you ever build door knock? Or any no, I didn't have to. I would have if phone calls didn't work. I mean, once I hit that, I'm like, I can sit in the AC. Dude, I roofed houses for like 10 years. All right? You think I'm going to go out and walk around in the sun, looking at the roofs, like having flashbacks and stuff? Like, no. No. If I can sit in the AC, that's another thing. We're spoiled to death. I mean, think about it. Would you, would, you know... You want to go roof houses or be a janitor or paint houses or work a nine to five? This is as much physical physical activity as you guys do all day. (laughs) That's all you do. And then, oh, you do a few curls. (laughs) We're spoiled. In here complaining, I'm scared to make calls. Well, go get a job. Go, go, go serve tables. Go, go do something else then. This whole business is predicated on you talking to people you don't know to help them buy and sell real estate. And you don't want to do the exact thing that this business is predicated on? Why'd you get your license? I don't know. Why are you scared to make calls? I don't know. Rejection. Okay. When you call a Zillow lead and they say, why are you calling? That's, that's your answer? Oh, I'm going to rent. I might rent something in next year. That's a Zillow lead. People crush it with Zillow, and that's great. I'm not, I'm not, listen, every single thing works. Again, you can take Zillow, and you can build this huge buyer business where all these buyers buy over the next five years and you sell hundreds of properties who now are what? Property owners. It works. Do I want to spend a million dollars to get there? No. I can get 
10 years worth of data of expired data and 7,500 property owners of my choice in my market with cell phones and emails for a couple of hundred dollars a month. Okay, sorry, Matt. I wish I read your profile earlier, but here you go. Um, you were with Remax for 18 years. And now no, I was with them for 10 years. I mean, I don't know what that so anyway, where, what that means or where you go. Not at all. Like a broker part? Not at all. Not at all. No. Nope. Okay, because I long as you're somewhere where somebody is going to show you the way, right? If you've got support, right? Especially as a new agent, if you're if you've got someone that will help you through those beginning stages of learning how to write a contract and how to talk to people and where to find property owners and what to say and how to show property and how to look stuff up on MLS, all that 101 real estate stuff, as long as somebody's there to help you learn that stuff. But I'll tell you this, there's not a single brokerage out there that's going to make you a top producer. None of them, right? They don't, they don't, they don't do nothing, right? Brokerages do nothing, right? They, what they do is, is their name is at the top of the contract, right? Do y'all put the name of the brokerage at the top of the contract like we do, right? And guess what? They don't even put it up there. We do. We write it. <laughs> they didn't get you that deal. They didn't negotiate that deal. They didn't go through all the hell you had to go through to find that deal and, and, and service that deal. They didn't do any of that stuff. They didn't put it on MLS. They didn't upload documents to the cloud. They didn't do nothing. They're just a place where you hang your license and pay rent for most of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking of their space. Thank you. The top producers, they just go be top producers. It's like this. I had a coach for like four months one time because I made 600K one year and I thought I'm gonna make a meal the next year and I didn't make it. I was on my way to make 600K again. I became really down on myself. What's wrong with me? So I hired a coach thinking this was going to help me figure out the secret sauce. And that was back in 2015. And um, basically what I learned that year was patience, that I was doing all the right things. I just had to be patient. And then two more years, I hit the million bucks. Well, fast forward like, I don't know, what was it? Six or seven years later, um, my, that, that same guy, the coach, big guy, big name in the industry, he said, because we still talk, and he said, because um, I was talking to him about new agents and top producers and blah, 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 and he said, man, listen, if you wouldn't have hired me as your coach, would you still have crushed it? I was like, you're damn right. And he said, he said, there you go, right? I can spend every single waking minute with somebody who's uh, not going to make it, and they still ain't going to make it. And I can spend every waking hour with a top producer and they're still going to leave the team or do something, whatever, right? And that really puts things into perspective. The losers are going to go lose no matter what you do. And the winners are going to go win no matter where they are or what you do, right? So be a winner. Realize that winners win, losers lose. Don't be a loser. Thank you, guys.